city lights Let them all fade away Just leave us alone And we'll live in a world of our own my first guest on the program this afternoon was born in Colac. He went to Melbourne High School, establishing himself there as quite an athlete. You may not have known that. He went on to um, form his first music group, a musical group in 1958. From there, well, that was called The Ramblers, by the way, and that was to open doors at Channel 9 and Channel 7 for him in Melbourne to have a career path in media. However, more fame was uh, on the go with Athel Guy, and he embarked on a career with the most successful Australian pop group ever. The Seekers. Athel's on the line right now. Athel, nice to have you with us today. Hello, Lee. Uh, great to be with you there. And uh, you've got a lot of interesting people on today. Uh, sounds like a real cool show. Including yourself, my friend, including you. Well, thank you. Yeah, nice to be with you. I'm really looking forward to coming to the Drum Theatre uh, next Thursday. It's a, it's a beautiful little uh, uh, in-concert live mini-musical, if you like, you know, which takes everybody... Uh, uh, through an hour or so of uh, all the great Seekers highlights, a lot of live music. Uh, I've got three... Uh, no, I've actually got four pals coming with me this time around. And, right. Uh, we take everybody back to the you know, the, the, the days of rock and roll, which is when the Ramblers kicked off, that first group of mine. Mm-hmm. And uh, because most of our guests in these morning melodies, they remember back to the late 50s, early 60s music, and that's where the Seekers got their sound from because we were all very different people, but... When we all got together as a group, we just locked in. You know, it was just a little bit of magic there music, musically for us all. And uh, we just loved the way our voices worked together. And as they say, uh, <laughs> the rest is history. Arthur, you're very, very right, because the, the harmonies were there, along with Judith Durham, who joined yeah. you. Uh, you know, she was a star in her own right, too. You guys all blended yeah. and moulded so, so well together. And you, you rarely see something like that or hear it, do you? Well, uh, to most musical groups, of course, or, you know, most musicians, they can, they can harmonise, mm. It's one of the bedrocks of, of any sort of music to be able to harmonise. But to get that blend that yep. we heard when we when we worked in together, it was just a meshing of of all the voices, you know, with the various intensities and uh, you know the the, the the sort of the voice that Judith had was just such a a beautiful coat hanger for myself and Keith and Bruce because you know we just. We love the harmonics. That's what we hear in our ears. Ethel, tell me, what was the first song you uh, you played around with before you really made a recording that that you you hit with that beautiful sound? What was the well, first? Well, I think the first the first song we ever sang together, and we do do it in this show in the Seeker Story, yeah. uh, which has got Buddy England with us, my old mate Bud, who's who had more hit records in the sixties than just about anybody else. Uh, Jenny and Rod and Michael Cristiano. Uh, when we sing it, yeah, of course, it's not the Seekers, but the tribute to the song uh, is great, and it sounds, in a sense, like it, it originally did for us, When the Stars Begin to Fall. Uh, the lovely, you know, classic gospel folk song out of the out of the late 50s, and, it, you know, it sounds still to us as fresh uh, now as it was when we first opened our mouths together. Well, you mentioned that gospel music there, but back in the 60s when you guys were forming, and, of course, Peter, Paul and Mary and others, there was a big yep. influence, wasn't there, on gospel? Oh, heavens above, yes, and that came through with Judith's trad jazz mm. uh, background, and you had wonderful groups, uh, you know, Pete Seeger's uh, group uh, uh, and their great harmonies, uh, it was a great, a great time, and they were very influential. And of course, the other, the other person who influenced us along the way, because the Seekers originally were four boys uh, that came out of our second group, which was the Escorts. I mean, we couldn't call the group that these days, as we often say. <laughs> uh, be in however, trouble. we then got away with it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was four boys, and we had a great lead singer, Ken Ray, uh, who, uh, you know, is still a lifelong friend. But then Ken got married and couldn't sort of keep coming out at night singing with the other boys. Um, and that's when Judith stepped in to take mm. uh, take Ken's place. But um, you know, we we were cutting our teeth on on all that late fifties, early sixties uh, material. And then, but as I said, Judith's background in trad jazz really legged us up to another level. And then when we got to England and we met up with Tom Springfield, well, well, he he and the Springfields had had some great hits, and I I think that was the pigeonhole that we filled because they'd broken up about eighteen months before we arrived. And they'd had great hits like Silver Threads and Golden Needles um, and yeah, some other great songs. Uh, very country group, uh, the Springfields. When Tom wrote I'll Never Find Another You, uh, that, that was the song, of course, that, you know, yeah. that took us over the musical Rubicon, if you like. Mm. But 
you know, I don't think we'd have found that sort of song where we were fossicking around in the, the musical vaults. That, that was around 1965, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. Late 64, actually. 64, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we arrived in England in May of 64. And, and we, we got work straight away. I mean, we'd been helped enormously by Horry Dargy, who had the great... The quartet. The Horry Dargy quartet. Mm. Uh, mm. uh, great musical ambassadors for Australia, like Graham Bell's jazz band over in Europe after the war. Years. Anyway, Horry insisted before we took off on the boat that we send a kit to the great organisation, the big agency that he used to work with in London. And, and that absolutely did the trick. I mean, we arrived on the boat at Southampton. I got a telegram uh, before we stepped off the boat saying, welcome to England. Uh, in two nights' time, you're on uh, national BBC television on Today Tonight. And we nearly fell over the railings. I mean, you know, we were straight into national television in England uh, uh, two nights after arriving uh, at Southampton. I mean, you, could, you just couldn't manufacture anything that ever happened to the sick as the... It was you know, a bit of a magic wand there, you know, a real gift from the cosmos. Ethel, before all that happened to you, of course, you, you did some work at Channel 9 in the media, didn't you, and in production and so on? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, that was a result of my first uh, group, the Ramblers, uh, singing on In Melbourne Tonight, on Graham Kennedy's In Melbourne Tonight. And uh, myself and Peter and uh, Gary were offered jobs at Channel 9, and I was studying uh, I was studying to be a... Well, I was an audit clerk, and I was studying to get an accounting degree, but... Uh, my boss said, no, you're crazy, mate. Get over there and take the job, you know. Yeah. And I'm so glad he said that. <laughs> Otherwise, my life would have changed direction uh, totally. But we, I ended up having a wonderful time in Channel 9, a great bedding down in the TV industry. And then, of course, I went over to Channel 7 a few years after that and then to the Clemenger Group. And I was very happily with them uh, and then to Jay Walter Thompson uh, before we sailed away. So I'd had a good grounding in business and marketing. So, And after all of that, of course, you had Parliament. Well, that's right. Yeah. Well, I'd, I spent the decade of the 70s in state Parliament. I'd, I, I, I was always... I was a bit of a serious dude in those days. I'd, <laughs> I'd, 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 I sort of grew up with a close affiliation with the young Liberals. Yes. And, and which was pretty much, it was more social than anything else. But Andrew Peacock was a great mate of mine. Right. Uh, and a mentor as well. Anyway, when I came back from overseas, I, I seriously just wanted to, to have a crack at just pre-selection, really. I never thought I'd, I'd, I'd get into anything that instantly, but I, I decided to stand for our skate seat here when the local member retired midstream and, um, and uh, stood successfully uh, uh, twice more after that. And then I opted out to do other things. So I had... Uh, mm. I had uh, a couple of other major business things sort of starting to clutter my life up a bit, but that's that's another story. But that was a great <laughs> yeah. time. It was a great time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, I, I had a year of Henry Volte, and that was something else. Something that great. would have been yeah. an education, wouldn't it? It was amazing. Yeah, he was yeah. Amazing. But yeah. Dick Hamer was the one. I, I love working with Dick Hamer. I had two very two and a well, and just over two and a half terms with Dick, and mm. he was a magnificent yeah. man, a and, colossal uh, guy, wasn't he? Oh, he was a great parliamentarian. Mm. Yes, you know, forget yes. About the politics. Well, a, a statesman, wasn't he? He was indeed, and he loved the arts and he loved the music. And uh, he and I got on like a house on fire. And uh, he, uh, he he desperately tried to talk me into staying uh, when I decided I wasn't going to stand in '79. But I had I had a couple of other business complications that we're going to get in the road, not the least of which was. A, an international airline that we were trying to get into. Australia. I remember that well. Yes, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, well, they're, they're the days, aren't they? And where are we now? We're uh, uh, yeah. banning Qantas, aren't we, at the moment? I think someone was saying yesterday. But <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> anyway, we, we, won't, we won't go there. We're talking about the Seekers. Um, yeah. the, the music of the Seekers. Now, why is it still as popular today? Why are they as popular today as what they were back in the 60s? What is it? It's it's a little bit of musical magic, and I and I don't think any of us in the industry can ever really put our finger on it. But uh, it would be the combination of, of, of the, you know, the the melodies, the harmonies, the the, the, uh, the rhythmic effects that Tom put into our songs, a lot of little subtleties that suddenly make the product, uh, and you know, right slap bang in the middle of the road. Uh, you know, we we still hunt for all those ingredients in music, even though I mean, music has changed so dramatically every decade. You know, you get you, technology gets in the road, and showbiz then gets in the road, and you've got to go out with pyrotechnics and you know dancers and you know ten other singers. But, uh, ours is simplicity. Ours just contains the most basic elements of musicality. Unfortunately, uh, the songs. Uh, 
are the critical elements, yeah. and it's really all about the music. Mm. Those great, great, great songs. Um, you know, we were looking at a book that Graham Simpson wrote recently, and he's he's done uh, he did the chronology of everything we've ever uh, ever recorded uh, with one of his great mates. Uh, and in the book, when you read through it, you know they've analysed every song we've ever recorded, uh, and it's quite clear that we were lucky enough to get a catalogue of songs that just had that uh, that little cosmic blessing. Every one of the tracks, every one of your hits was a yep. hit, and, and it's, well, as you're saying there, there was something in each one of those that yeah. was so fresh, it was new, yeah. but it was old yeah. at the same time. Well, it's it's very interesting, you know, that uh, the boys from ABBA were being interviewed here in Australia, and I think it was by Ernie Sigler years ago, and I'm desperately trying to get this the tape of this statement. Uh, I don't know if it was Benny or Bjorn, they were talking to Ernie, and... Uh, and he said, where did you get your, your sound from? You know, that great Abba sound with two girls yeah. and everything. Mm-hmm. And they said, uh, and, you know, uh, I'll paraphrase this, obviously, well, we, we grew up listening to an Australian group called the Seekers, and we were always sitting around trying to work out how they did their harmonies. And, what a compliment. And off the back of that, well, I mean, it could never be a greater compliment to the group. Mm. And of course, what, that's a great compliment to the way Keith arranged all our harmonics. Yes, because, yes. I mean, we would slip naturally into the harmonics yeah, quite easily, but then Keith would go, no, hang on a minute, no, don't sing that note. You know, now, put that into that chord. Yeah, right? yeah. We kept the chord simplistic, you know. Uh, we didn't like minor keys, and you wouldn't be going for sevenths or flat and ninths or... <laughs> or <mentioned surfing. laughs> no, no, you know, no. It, it, it was basically orchestral. You know, mm. when you listen to an orchestra and you hear that lovely, thick blending of all the That's instruments, right. You know? And that's the way we always kept it, uh, because you, when you get that right with four voices, you get a you get a fifth voice almost added in. You can hear it in your ears. Yes, you know? you, yes, you can. You get almost a chime. You get a chiming effect in in theatres, and that's, you know, the, the great concert halls that we've been able to play in now, which are, of course, very different to what we were playing in the early days, uh, uh, you know, it helps to get that lovely magical effect that just sends a shiver up the spine when you know you've got it right. I'm sure my listeners can't wait to, to hear your story and the story of the Seekers on the 1st. That's next Thursday next uh, at half past 10 at the Drum Theatre. Yeah, go along, have a cup of tea and uh, enjoy yourself. It's going to be a, to that. Yeah, yeah, going to be a fantastic day. Story. Mm. You've been down to the drum before, I think, haven't you? A uh, long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to being back. We, we love these theatres, you know. We've got so many beautiful regional theatres in Australia. And with this little crew of mine, we, we simply call the group Apple Guy and Friends, uh, which, which means that I can add anyone in that I like or take one out. <laughs> if you don't like them. <laughs> no, no, no. no, these, these guys, yeah. I love they are four brilliant musicians. That's and, beautiful. And they, they know how to put the secret stuff over, and we have a lot of fun doing it. It's lovely to meet people. You know, who, who possibly don't get to the Seekers concerts in the... I'm not saying not Danny and I'm in the city, of course, but we take this around Australia, out into the country areas. And, you know, it's the, it's the morning melody circuit. It's uh, for all those uh, who can, you know, cast their minds back a little bit and uh, we'll take them on a, a fabulous journey. It'll be a lovely that. journey, yep, absolutely, mate. All right, it's next Thursday, the 1st of June. It's half past 10 at the Drum Theatre. Get online and book your tickets. It's 70 minutes, no interval in there. It's 70 minutes right through. Go to Lou before you go in. And it's down at the, uh, the Drum Theatre. Good on you, Ethel. Nice to catch Thank up, mate. Right. I know you're a busy guy, but I do appreciate your time today, pal. Uh, great pleasure, Lee. You and take care. to seeing everybody on Thursday. You will indeed. See you, mate. Right. Bye-bye now. Bye. Say goodbye.